So in this video, we're going to look at modeling range out to decay using Excel. The reason why I've made this video is I know lots of students now don't use Excel at all in school. And so it's actually quite challenging to do this activity. It is something that is specified as part of the OCR exam syllabus for physics. And you may have to do something like it in an exam question, either writing down what the equation would be using Excel or just have a good understanding of how you could use it to model radar to decay. So this is the process. We start by looking, we know activity is the rate at which parent atoms decay, so delta n over delta t, and that's equal to decay constant times the number of parent nuclei in the sample. So what we can now do is rearrange for delta n the number of parent atoms that decay against time. And so we can rearrange it and we get that equation. If we now rearrange it slightly again, so we have lambda delta t there at times by the number of parent atoms in the sample, we can clearly see that we have an equation which links how many will decay every time interval. It's important to keep the time interval as low as possible for it to be accurate modeling. So in Excel, we're going to make delta t equal to 0.1 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to model ray depth to decay using Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to use the number of parent atoms as a thousand, the initial. I'm going to use a half-life of one second, and that gives me that decay constant. And the first thing I need is to compare the two models. So I'm going to put the modeling of ray depth to decay there, and I'm going to put the actual values of exponential decay there to compare the two models. So there's my table, and I'll just put some grid lines on so I can see easily. I could just put the function straight into here, but what I want to do is to have a bit more capability to change numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the key numbers here, which we can use in the formula, which allows me to change the number of parent atoms, it'll allow me to change the half-life, and it'll also allow me to change the sample time, which I'm gonna make 0.1 seconds to start with to see the effect it has on our graphs that we're going to plot. So over here, I'm going to put n0 equal to 1,000. I've got t to the half, and that's going to be one second. Now, the next thing is I want lambda. Now, unfortunately, in Excel, you can't just put that straight in, so I'm going to use a mathematical function and copy that symbol in. Now, of course, I could just write lambda equal to that here, but then if I change t to the half, it's not going to change that. So I'm going to put a function in for that. So in order to create a function, you need to go to formulas and then click on insert function. And I'm going to use look for ln, which is log to the base e. Once I've done that, I can then put in there two. And then, of course, divide by t to the half, which is going to be um, that cell there and that now works out my lambda. The next thing is I want delta t and I'm going to make delta t equal to 0.1 seconds. That's between each sample. Again delta t I have to input it as a mathematical function and then put that through. So I'm going to start by entering the first set of values which is zero then the parent atoms start at 1,000, and they start at 1,000 there. I'm linking to that cell there, which allows me to change that value, which will change the starting value if I want to. The next thing is I want to put a formula in here to save me typing all these out. And, of course, it's going to be that time plus delta t. So that's equal to that cell plus this cell over here. Now, the important thing is, when I scroll down, what will happen is that will go from C16 to C17, C18. But I don't want this to change to J1415 because there's nothing there. So I'm going to lock that cell a reference by using dollar signs before the J locks the column and putting a dollar sign before the 13 also locks not only the column but also the row. So I can now scroll those down and that fills in all my values like that. The next thing I need to do is to put an equation in 
the, the modeling method. And of course, that is going to be the number of parent atoms in that cell minus delta N, the ones that have decayed from the previous value. And of course, that's going to be that cell minus, open brackets, the value of lambda uh, times by the number of parent atoms in the previous sample, which is that, times by delta T, which is there. Again, you will see that I need to lock this reference cell and this reference cell. So as I scroll down, it doesn't scroll down these as well. So I use dollar signs before and after the letter and the number. So watch as I put these in. So just to reiterate that, we've got the number of parent atoms before is there, minus delta N, which is going to be equal to lambda, which we've locked as that cell, times by delta T, which we've locked at that cell, times by the number of parent atoms before, which is the cell above. And now we're going to just copy that down. So now we look at the function in here for exponential decay, which is going to be equal to n naught e to the minus lambda t. So I've got to use a function to do that. So now we look at the function in for exponential decay, which is going to equal to n naught e to the minus lambda t. So I'm going to put that equal to, first of all, n naught, which is that cell there, times by, and now I've got to put a mathematical function in. So I'm going to go to formula insert function, and this time I want exp for exponential, and in brackets I need to put minus lambda, which is there, and then of course times by the time, which is this time here. Now finally, remember that that has got to be set as that cell, and so has this got to be set as that cell. n is n naught, so I've also got to set that as a function, so I've also got to set that as a set cell as well. So putting into each of those, the dollar signs sorts that out. What we now do is plot a graph of the modeling method against time and compare it with a graph of exponential method against time. I'll show you how to fit an exponential best fit line to it and also to display the formula so we can compare the two decay constants between the model and the actual exponential method. So what I'm now do is to produce two graphs. The first graph will be a modeling method against time. The second graph will be an exponential method against time so we can compare the two. We'll plot the graph. I'll show you how to do the exponential best fit line and also get an equation straight from Excel which allows us to look at the difference in the decay constants. So first you're going to click on insert and then go to scatter and we're going to choose a scatter graph. I'm just going to magnify that up there and then if you click on the data with your right hand mouse button and then it will bring up a column below and you go down to add trend line. Once you do that you can click on exponential and also the key thing is display equation on the chart. Then it always displays it really small, so just magnify that up so it's a size that you can read. You'll notice the decay constant here is minus 0.718, which is very close to 0.69. It's just very slightly bigger on our modeling method compared with exponential. Let's do the exact same thing, but now plot um, this graph of the exponential method by highlighting that column and that column and repeating exactly the same thing. You'll notice that the exponential decay uh, constant is identical because of course this is from the mathematical function. The beauty about putting these numbers here is we can now use this really powerfully to model exponential decay. Because when we differentiate, the smaller the value delta t, the closer the value is to the actual value. 
So we can change delta T, and I want you to do this yourself later, change delta T to maybe a tenth or a hundredth and have a look at how much closer it models the exponential method. And you can keep scrolling down if you want to look uh, against time. You can also change the half-life there, and I'll just demonstrate that one now to you. So if we halve the half-life from 1 second to 0 0.5 seconds, you can see very quickly what difference it makes. So you can see it's changed to K constants there, but what I want you to do is to create your own spreadsheet and then use the modeling here to change some of these values to see how it's done. You need to be able to show that you can use Excel to model rage apps to K. It's part of the OCR course, and it's clearly stated in the syllabus. I'm not sure how they can ask you a question on it in the exam. They might give you the table of results, and they might give you one or two cells that you need to put the equation in for. So it's really important that you understand this modeling process.